Hello everybody, this is Alice House Gaming and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play The Banner Saga 3. In the previous episode, we returned to Arborang for the second time, and surprisingly I've gotten there a third time, so we're at least getting most of what we're looking for on this. Not all of it, though that's probably for the best. Anyways, armies have crashed against the steep black cliffs of Arborang before, as the warp do now. You retreated again, and it was costly. Thousands more dead, but necessary. Banshee Wells went on long into the encroaching night, but the Black Rock Wall has never been breached, the menders tell you. Yeah, but the Black Rock Wall has never had to go up against a supernatural force. Like this. Even with so many slaughtered, space is scarce. Leo nods when you tell him you're going to get some air. Outside the crowded gathering halls, survivors camp in different clusters atop the Black Rock. You wonder how many families sewn upon your banners are, uh, banner are just memories now. Then you note how strange the silence sounds. The clans have lost their taste for troublemaking, and even the warped have withdrawn. Maybe you're safe up here. Maybe the menders are right. Unlikely. Okay, only place we can go besides Heroes and Market are the stairs. Actually, while I'm at it, I may as well get Canary's, uh, heroic title up. Uh, never miss. Yeah. Let's see, who else? His is maxed out. Alets is mostly there. But I don't want her getting... The, uh, extra crate, because I don't want enemies near her, so rank 2 is fine. Not that I can get it any higher. Egil doesn't really need rank 5, because we don't have injuries. Bastion, I'm probably going to give Monster Killer. Or maybe the Mountain, who knows. And Hackons is already maxed out. But I don't have, well, I could give one of them. And not much of a point in going to the market. Because I've A, blown my renown, and B, there's no supplies. Not that there's any point to the supplies. Anyways, to the stairs. Fatigue draws you into a stupor. Feels weird to be doing nothing, Leo says, breaking the silence. Spirits are low. Maybe this would be a good chance to see how everyone's holding up. You consider it. Okay. Well, let's start with Eggle. Now, this is going to differ depending on who your hero is. You get the most out of it with Alette. Egil puts a hand on your shoulder as you pass, the first smiling face you've seen in a while. How are you? Are you holding up? I see you going around, making sure everyone else is alright. Has anyone asked how you're doing? Let's see, all options lead to the same result. Not going to lie, it's been rough. Sure is. Things started off bad, but all of this is even more out of our control now. I can't shake the feeling that I'm really lucky to still be here. What are the odds? So many people didn't make it. Oh, is there anything I can do, you know, to help? All options lead to the same result. I could use a hand making sure the survivors get any food or medicine they need. I'd be happy to do that. Looks like you've got the Great Hall covered, but I'll go between the other shelters and see what they're missing. You've always been the helpful one. If I had... Eggle hesitates, sweat hanging on his brow. You can tell he's really wrestling with whether to say something or not. What is it, Gil? What is it, Eggle? Or what is it? All gets progress. And... That depends... And this differs depending on who the hero is. You're doing great, we'll talk again later, gets you nothing. What is it, Gil? I'm sorry about what happened to your father. I told him when all this started that I would... I'd do anything to protect you. But I didn't protect him. And that's the worst thing. The worst I could have done. Gil, it wasn't your job to protect him. I know. I know that. But I never had the chance to tell you when... Well, this seems like the last chance I might get. God, I'm such a... That's not really wanted to s what I wanted to say, Alette. What I'm trying to say is... You know how I feel about you. I'm sorry, I just thought I... I needed to say it. In case I don't get another chance. 
All options lead to the same result. Now, if it's Rook, he's going to be talking about a let, and all options lead to the same result. If the hero is Oddleaf, how did the Eye of All People survive this long? All options lead to the same result. Like I said, you get most out of this conversation if you are a let. See, all options lead to the same result. I care about you too. You did? Do? I mean, I haven't had time to really consider... Oh. Right. I shouldn't have said anything. Gil looks embarrassed, painfully of sh unsure of what to do next. You're like a brother to me? Nothing, except for extreme burn. Listen, now's not the time, gets you nothing. Kiss him on the cheek, an achievement. You're sweet. Eggle's face goes bright red. Young love, which I forgot to re-enable the Steam overlay so I can't look into that, so just give me... One second... Young love, do you like me? Yes? No? Eh, I was hoping it had something more personal. If we survive this, we should get to know each other better. Get to know... Uh... I mean talk, Gil. We should spend more time together. That's what I meant too! Yeah, sure it is. Right, so let me get my shield. I better see if there's anywhere I'm needed now. That sounds good. Eagle waves as he stumbles out of the Great Hall. You smile to yourself. Alright, now how about we chat with Ubin? See, all options can be explored on this, and the last one gives you 10 morale. The Scrivener is scratching diligently at its papers. He looks up. Scathatch halts whatever conversation he and, he and Ubin were having. Hello, Hunter. Found yourself a little patch of quiet. Don't know what to do with yourself? Something like that. The eye of the storm, as the poets say. You start predicting the weather when you've been around long enough. Or maybe you just talk about it more. The old Varl stops scratching notes to talk. Ever seen anything like this before in your many years? You know, I've heard mankind... I've heard mankind take being called old an insult. But I never knew what not why. Now let me think. When the fall of Skirmirstead was something to behold, half a city sinking into the Silver Stone, and Grofheim was even bigger. Something like this? No, it was not. Funny how our memories measure worth, isn't it? I remember my companion Gunnulf telling me I look like an eggplant better than I recall a sinking city beneath the waves. That's why I like to write these things down. Scathatch says something in his own tongue, and Ubin laughs. He says I don't look like an eggplant. Yeah, purple's not a deep enough color, or dark enough color. The old Varl stops scratching notes to talk. What have you been writing in your book? Stories, mostly. But not like the Menders and Scalds, no. The Menders write about what's in the past, and the Scalds stretch fantasies about what happened. The historical writings are mostly useless, if you ask me. Even a perfect rector is only go as good as the man reading it. Most of us aren't that good. You mean we remember things the way that suits us best? You can spin a dozen different morals from the same yarn. Indeed, we're all a bunch of liars at heart. I write stories about people. When someone reveals their hopes and fears, that's the truth of things. Even if it's a lie, understand? One of the reasons I learned to talk to people, like the horseborn. I'd like to speak with the Dredge, too, one day. If they'll have me. The old Varro stops scratching notes to talk. I've been curious for more details about Dalalon, the Horseborn's homeland. Why don't you ask them yourself? Ubin says a few words to Scathatch, who nods. Ubin translates the best he can. I am a trader. I've traveled more than most and never seen the end of our lands. Maybe they are endless. Men have said it is empty, but they are wrong. They only think it is empty because they move too slowly. When the sun stops, we celebrate. It is a blessing. It is warmth and freedom. But then the shattering split, it, shattering split our land into pieces. Now each piece is small and empty. I think my kind becomes restless here. They talk about the brave who tried to outrun the darkness. They have already become legend. Maybe they are still running across the Dalaland. I like to imagine this. Your city is heavy and cold and made for men to walk slowly in circles but go nowhere. I will be glad to see the sun again. He looks a little wistful and nods his head to say he's done. 
I'll leave you to your work. No worries. If you want to talk, I'm glad for the company. Out of curiosity, what are you planning to do with your writings if the darkness overtakes us? Leave it for someone else to find. Ubin's smile suddenly falls from his face as he realizes it'll become warped. Would you believe I hadn't thought of that? Maybe a horseborn could... No, not without a mender. Maybe we could spare a mender to... Damnation. We'll have to live. There's no way around it. Now. And now for Zephyr. Zephyr is overseeing the menders, looking just as drained if not more. She calls you by name. I've heard more about you since coming to Arborang. It seems like these people owe you a great deal. I didn't do it on my own. Close enough, though I wish I had supported you better at the gates. Also, I heard that you traveled with a varl named Yingvar. It seems like quite a coincidence, at first. You consider what to say. How did you discover this light spell? Not easily. Things went... bad at Manahar, and I was the only one left in the aftermath. I spent days trying anything I could think of against the darkness. I nearly gave up, but... What Juno and Avon must have done, nobody thought it was possible. When you become a Valka, are you all forced to take an oath to be as vague and mysterious as possible? I'm sorry, it would be hard to believe if I told you. Try me. I believe they have pulled down and shattered the black sun that resides inside the earth. Okay, I can see your earlier point. Yingvar, do you know Ivor? He is well known, especially amongst the dredge. They say he once slew a sunder called Raze, who carried Bellower's child. Ruin was Raze's sister. It is my belief that Ruin probably came to Arborang hoping to find Yingvar. Ah, okay. So, Bellower was Raze's wife, Ruin was her sister, Eilis, who knows. In the face of this darkness, the other Sunder have scattered to the wind, but Ruin wanted revenge, even if it meant killing everyone in the way. Are you saying all these people who died in the siege was because of Ivor? And I can only imagine it is why Bellower chased you all the way to Bower's Guard. I suppose there's no point in secrets anymore. After the Great War, War, the Valka tried to broker a peace with the Dredge, and it mostly succeeded. But one of the conditions was that we deliver the Varl named Yingvar. They called him Destroyer. We searched, but never found him. Juno and, uh, Juno and Avon would almost certainly have recognized him. Did they ever mention this? Mm -mm -mm -mm. They never said anything about it. And then they just happened to take Ivor with them to the White Tower. That is concerning. I just wish I knew their intentions. You trust your friend Ivor completely? More than completely. Then you are right to let him go. And that itself gives me hope. And what's your plan now? To keep this light lit as long as I can. In the early days, the Volca had nearly godlike powers. They spent generations obsessed with immortality. It has become diluted over time, of course. Did you know that the Valka raised the black rock plateau we're standing on, pulled straight out of the earth? The unnaturally dark rock is the same material Dredge used to make their armor, believe it or not. That was long before I was born. Me? I've learned a few tricks, but all I can do now is share the same blind hope that we, if we just hold out. Well, maybe this will be of more use to you than me. Valka retrieves an item from the folds of her cloak and hands it to you. Clasp of Kine. How long do you think we have left? Not long now. Make the most of your time. I'll let you focus. I only wish I could have done more. And the last one is also meant to give you... Uh... More morale, but... Again, we're already maxed out, and I now need to look up that one. Uh, let's see. Good. Good listener. Talk to at least 15 allies in Arborang and the Darkness. Alright. Off to the tower. The Warped have not been able to scale the Black Wall since coming here a few days ago. Or a day ago. Many want to take full advantage of the respite, others call it folly. Keeping a full watch now means forcing fatigued and wounded war, uh, wounded survivors to take turns. Some haven't slept in days. 
Forget the watch, exhaustion is a bigger threat right now, gets timer 1.3. The strong protect the weak, let the volunteers take watch, gets timer 0.9. Force everyone to take their fair turn, timer 0.3, Hogan dies. So, yeah. Uh, I'm also going to look over the other returns to Arborang, see if we really need to. Let's see, any achievements? Yeah, there's no really other achievements, so I think I'm going to start going for the ones that get us the most amount of time. We miss out on some stuff in terms of story, but not really all that much. And there's one that you could get with Raga if he was still alive, but no. Forget the watch. Exhaustion is a bigger threat right now. That gets us timer 1.3. The few who protest loudest begin yawning through their arguments. They soon give up. Vigilance falls to the wayside, but the warp do not come. For now. They say it was luck. If it means everyone has a chance to recover, the risk was worth it. And now to the basement. Odin comes to you quietly in confidence. Saw a whole bunch of the fools, she confides. Drunk as boiled owls, laughing it up down there. Some of the men have snuck downstairs to take advantage of the dwindling mead. Join us, Hunter, they chortle when you go to look for yourself. And take it with you. Maybe they have a point. On the other hand, these supplies could have been stretched out for days. You spy Trigvi amongst them, and slap a cup from his hand. It rattles to the floor. As you watch, it continues to bounce as if on its own until the whole room, rum room rumbles and shakes. Flagstone bursts around your feet and the warp claw their way from underneath. Terror drags the sluggards to their feet. This must be what the warp have been up to this whole time. Fane, slurs a man, pulling down a barrel onto the warped and knocking it back below. Fane them all! Save the supplies and wait for help to arrive. That gets us timer 2.1. Use the barrels to help repel the warped. Timer 1.4, but morale minus 5. Rouse the drunks to stand their ground and fight. Timer 1.2. If Trigvi is alive, he dies and you get timer 0.2. Save the supplies and wait for help to, to arrive. Leave the meat alone, you shot angrily, pushing a man up the stairs, and send some real help if you're going to be useless. Quickly. By the way, any of these choices work out for you. Well, obviously except the one where Trig V dies. But there is no good choice on this one. More warp drag themselves up into the basement, and a turn later back up comes clomping down the stairs. What took so long, you shout? It's not just here, Aleo replies. They're coming up all over the plateau. Then we send them back into the dirt quickly, you reply. Okay, Clasp of Kine. And we have multiple of them. And I'd swear we had one beforehand. Or maybe it's on the other party? Yeah, probably. Let's see, Hakon has plus three to all talents, one strength attack, one break. Plus three to all talents, one will per turn, one armor per turn, and one break. So, the question is, do I want one less strength attack? I don't know why they don't just call one plus one to strength, but I guess what it means is you get more damage output rather than just getting outright strength up. Well, per turn, arm per turn, protects from death on strength attacks greater than one, minus two strength attack. I'm gonna keep the, uh, meat on him. What does Alette have? Yeah, no, that's too good. Let's see, Eggle, he's got something good. Scathatch, what have you got? Rate all talents, 20% crit chance. I think... I think the class book kind will be better for Scathatch. And Canary has... Tools of Skilding. One ranged distance is pretty good. 30% crit chance. 
Yeah. Bastion has got the god scale. How he's wearing it, I have no clue. Three armor, one aggro. I think... Because he doesn't have any... Oops. He do, I don't think he has any talents. Oh, but he does have five points available. Okay, don't know how. Put a couple into robust... Couple into hunker down. And... Hmm, where to put the last point? Exploit, divert... Let's go divert. Confirm that. And then we'll give him the Clasp of Kind to further boost those... talents. Mm hmm Yeah, I think that's the best choice. Alrighty then. Let's do this. Did I remember to... Yeah, I remember to allocate our points. Now, I should also note... If you didn't finish off that have didn't finish off Eyeless in the Banner Saga 2, what in the depths? They dug their way under the wall. Huh, if I'd known Trigvi was gonna be here, I was going to put him to better use. Okay, Eggle, you take the center. Hack on. Actually, it'd be better if Hakon goes up the right side. Bastion up the left, because there's more targets here for him. Canary and Aled are going to stay towards the back. Scathatch, you get beside Ego. Let's see if we can get through this. What's going up with Chigby? Drunk. Minus one move, 20% mischance, one strength damage resist, though. Good boy. And it looks like we don't have any control over him, and it also looks like this is going to be a wave battle. And we've just passed the seven minute mark for this. Uh, hmm. Do I think we can take them out quickly? Possibly. But at the same time, if we don't have enough time for this... Because I don't know if it's going to be two waves or three waves. If it's two waves, maybe, but if it's three, there's no chance. You know what? I'm going to make this a shorter episode than usual just because of that. Because if I have to stop midway through, then I'm not going to be able to uh, do it. I'm just going to have to do it all again. So, as I said, I'm going to end things off here for today. If you guys like what you see, please leave a like, subscribe for future content, don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications for when I upload, or to hit the straw poll link to vote for our next Let's Play. And please, leave a comment down below this video. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.